This is the Fifth Estate, a conversation between young African scholars from the Fort Hall School of Government and Professor Mutahi Ngunye. This Sunday, we will plead temporary insanity and posit a series of bizarre hypotheses to the country. And we will do so not because our school has been bitten by a mental bug, no. We want the country to connect certain unrelated dots. We will map the dots of events from 2013 to date. Then we will ask our usual qui bono question. Who benefits? Once we identify the beneficiary, the qui bono law assumes that the beneficiary is also the perpetrator of the event. For instance, who benefits from swapping the genuine BBI bills that went to the counties with fake ones? Is it Gideon Moy or Nairobi Baptist Church? Zero. The beneficiary has a name and he is also the owner of this scheme. Similarly, who benefited from the Westgate terror attack and the Garissa University attack of April 2015? And who benefited from the repeat election of 2017? Was it Raila or Nakumat? Zero. The beneficiary has a name and he was also the owner of this scheme. Before the ink that Uhuru Kenyatta used to sign his oath of office had dried, someone very close to him had begun to execute a scheme. And the strategy of this someone was simple. In order to look good, he must make Uhuru look bad. It worked. When Westgate and Garissa University attacks happened, whom did we blame? Uhuru. Did he look bad? Yes. Did we blame Ruto? Zero. Did Ruto benefit? Yes. In fact, Ruto started posturing as a more competent leader than Uhuru. What about the Maraga cancellation of the 2017 election results? Whom did we blame for the fiasco? Uhuru. Did Uhuru look bad? Yes. And did we blame Ruto? Zero. If Ruto was behind it, would we have suspected him? Zero. Very smooth. What is our point here? All the misfortunes of Uhuru's first term were choreographed and executed with criminal smoothness. And if the beneficiary was William Ruto, then we must entertain the thought that he was behind them. Yes, if the qui bono method tells us that the beneficiary of an act is also the perpetrator, Ruto could have been behind these acts. Think about it. In our state of temporary insanity, we want to quote a self-proclaimed public intellectual who suffers from mental disturbia. This voodoo expert, name withheld, advised Ruto on Twitter to kill his boss in order to become president immediately. Ruto did not correct him. And so we wondered, is it because Ruto has entertained the thought himself? Or is it because he does not mind the thought? Two unrelated things make us curious in this regard. One, about two years ago, Uhuru Kenyatta's plane made a sudden about turn from the Ethiopian airspace and aborted a foreign trip. According to the media, there was a security scare that forced the president to return to Nairobi furious. What was that about? And who benefits from a security scare on the president? Two, a spent cartridge was found near Uhuru Kenyatta's podium in 2019 during Mashuja Day ceremony in Mombasa. The Daily Nation newspaper claimed 
that the bullet had been fired by a sniper. What was that about? Who was the target for the bullet? The Nairobi City Council? Or was it Ruto? Zero. Pushed to the wall, a man with raw ambition will do the unthinkable. Now we must take you a little deeper into our conspiracy theory on Ruto. It is about high-end poisons from Russia. The other day, Ruto went to bed with the Russians and the product he was pimping was the Russian COVID vaccine. We are not worried about the vaccine. We are worried that the vaccine and the poisons are produced by the same medics. And in Russia, there is a military unit called GRU constituted to do medical assassinations using poisons. In 2006, a top Russian official called Litvinenko was poisoned using polonium. Ashes of this nuclear poison were sprinkled on his teapot. Then they started exploding like nuclear bombs in his body. He died a slow and painful death. Then there was the story of a Russian military officer called Sergei. They traced him to the UK, smeared the doorknob to his house with poison, and almost killed him and his daughter slowly and painfully. And so, when we hear that Ruto has gone to bed with the Russians and their poisons, we worry. If you were an ambitious DP frustrated by your boss, would you go to Russia to buy the vaccine or some poison? Dear Kikuyus, if the Russians are selling both vaccines and poison, what is Ruto buying in Russia for you? Vaccine or poison? Once upon a time, there were two prostitutes, a baby and a sword. The story is recorded in the Holy Bible for Kikuyus. The two prostitutes were housemates. And during COVID, they both got pregnant and gave birth. But one of the prostitutes lay on her baby and killed him. Then, she switched him with the living one as the mother of the living boy slept. In the morning, the prostitutes fought for the living baby. And to resolve their fight, they went to King Solomon. When Solomon listened to their stories, he ordered that the living baby be cut into two. This way, each mother would take half a baby home. The real mother screamed in total disbelief at the thought. But the killer prostitute asked Solomon to cut the baby into two. She declared that none of them should have the baby. This way, Solomon was able to determine the real mother. Dear Kikuyus, there is an evil prostitute amongst you and he has a name. Call him out. And now, a random thought. When the Philistines cornered Samson in the Holy Bible and tied him to the pillars of the temple, he was low. They had removed his eyes and humiliated him beyond. In this state of desperation, Samson summoned all his strength, held the temple pillars and brought the entire temple down. Because Elohim, the Almighty, had condemned him to death, Samson decided to commit suicide and die with everyone around him. And this is the Samsonian option for William Ruto. 
if he will not split the baby into two, he will bring down the temple with everyone inside. Hmm. But there is more. He started bringing down the temple after Westgate and Garissa terror attacks. Then he brought down the temple after the Maraga ruling of 2017. Now, the temple is going down on fake BBI bills and irrational judicial decisions. If this is not really a brutal, who is it? A Sherlock Holmes taught us, when you exhaust the possible in an investigation, then the impossible, no matter how improbable, will give you the truth. And the truth has led us to William Ruto as the engineer of sabotage in the Uhuru Kenyatta government. Dear Kenyans, take it or leave it.